Okay, so Shinji is as cute as expected. Maybe even cuter than expected. Also, probably the biggest bottom I've ever seen. Also, why he won't get in his Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> He's never been inside of anything before in his life. Honestly, this is kind of what 2015 was like for me personally. <laughs> I won't delve into details, but I feel like Misato is probably in Shinji's harem. Ray is probably also in his harem, but Ray is not looking too good. Ray is looking like Patchy the Pirate. Okay, I have to ask because I feel like it needs to be stated, but is it, is it just me? Or does Shinji react to his father the same way every bratty Uke does <laughs> every seven? So at this point, I'm kind of guessing that these big, uh, not Gundams are made up of the angels based on the, the, the eye that popped out at the end when Shinji was seeing it in his flashback that he had forgotten about until that moment. I'm going to assume it's like alien tech that they've just taken from the dead angels that they somehow killed maybe one time and they turned them into Gundams. That's my theory at this point. Is Misato the same voice actor as Usagi, aka Sailor Moon? Because they sound identical. I should probably look that up. So in three short episodes, Shinji has become the most obedient obedient sub I think I've ever seen. And on top of that, the b has finally found his t I like Suzuhara so far, he's kinda cute. <laughs> But I also feel like Semehara here is probably gonna die because I just get the general vibe that any character that doesn't have about a million figures in various forms and by various companies is probably gonna die in this series. So Suzuhara or Semehara as I'm going to call him <laughs> is clearly in love with Shinji. I mean, I have yet to meet this Kaoru character that, I mean, spoilers, I, I, you're watching an Evangelion video in 2023. <laughs> If you don't know the story by now, you don't care. Shinji and Kaoru is quote unquote endgame or whatever, but as of right now, I'm team Suzuhara, AKA Semehara. <laughs> AG1 is a nutritional drink full of supplemental vitamins for anyone looking for some extra energy and nutrition in their day-to-day, -day, whether you're a seasoned athlete or an office worker working from home. As someone who personally is getting back into dancing for the first time after five years, AG1 has been a welcome addition to my morning routine for the past few months to help me stay focused through the workday and to make it through rehearsal at night without the need for excess caffeine that would send my sleep schedule to the shadow realm. It's also gluten-free, which is someone with celiac I can appreciate, plus contains all-in-one foundational nutrition effectively acting as a probiotic and multivitamin. Of course, if you're pregnant or nursing, consult with your physician before taking. And if you click the link at the top of my description, you can get the free gift offer of a one-year supply of vitamin D3K2. Get you all that! When five travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. It gives you sustainable energy with no caffeine crash and is NSF certified for sport for pro athletes. Shinji drank some AG1, I bet he'd get in the robot by now. So Shinji has just entered his prayers for Bobby era running away from home. I'm also realizing he's kind of, he's very Yoon bum-like at times. <laughs> in terms of his like inability to defend himself, uh, just speak up in general. He has a new boyfriend, so this is giving visual novel at this point. Cause now he has an alternate boyfriend choice, but it looks like in the end, we'll, we'll call that punch a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato potato! Suzuhara, who I still think is going to get killed at some point now that Shinji has decided to stay. Sugar, spice, and nothing nice because Ray's Ray Shinji's dad! So I'm like only five episodes in, I know, and I think this is like a 20 something episode series, but where is the ginger girl with the eye patch? I'm wondering where she is. I know she's like a key character, has too many damn figures. Shinji just went through like a heterosexual disaster of a scene, so <laughs> now I see why he ends up gay. Also, Ayanami Ray uh, has Anna Kyoyama's voice actor, I'm fairly certain, from Shaman King. Shinji is in a harem right now with Sailor Moon and Anna from Shaman King. I'm dying to know what uh, the Ginger Pirates voice actor is just to see what, what finishes out that trio. And I think there's a few other people. And I have to wait for uh, his boyfriend to show up. Well, his other boyfriend. The boyfriend that's not the boyfriend that I'm currently rooting for, but... So Shinji has just experienced a level of formerly unfathomable. This is some next level girth. If you are not prepared for next level girth, it will indeed knock you unconscious. But yeah, Shinji is losing to geometry. There's just something about him complaining all the time that I find like irredeemably cute. I bet a lot of people probably find it annoying, but I find it adorable. So did anybody at this point in, or this stage of the series predict that Shinji was going to be gay? Cause he has literally next to no interest in women at all. You can fill the harem with as many <laughs> anime girls as you want. It doesn't matter. If <laughs> 
have the dick he's looking for. So we've learned that the second impact was 15 years ago. And this takes place, I think, what, in 2015? So that means that the second impact happened was Y... The, the second impact was Y2K. That's why it's the second impact. I don't know. They haven't said what the hell the first impact is. They're talking about trying to prevent the third impact. It's all high-key climate change propaganda. Well, I say propaganda. Propaganda is a bad thing. <laughs> what's, what's propaganda if it's a good thing? Propaganda. <laughs> I guess. Hugo, I forgot to mention, has shown up a few times. He's hot. He's probably gonna die. That running of the Ava chasing after the JA, it's me chasing after my man. <laughs> okay, now I understand why Shinji is so generally annoyed with Misato. It's because his boyfriend is paying all the attention to her. So we finally met the ginger pirate who is very appropriately on a ship. Her name is Asuka. She's trying to impress Shinji. Uh, girl, he's gay. <laughs> Good luck with that. Speaking of Shinji, Shinji is giving... <laughs> <laughs> Femboy boy wife in her plug suit. His boyfriends are impressed. He's not impressed, but he fits the damsel role ever so well. In this Kaji guy, I I I, I, I generally do not. <laughs> I generally do not like him. I'm team Misato in this. There's a need to be teams, but I guess I've chosen a team. Going into this episode, I honestly personally thought that Asuka was going to be the catalyst for the heterosexual agenda. I'm rethinking that. By the end of the episode, I feel like she's actually the catalyst of the lesbian agenda. <laughs> Hear me out. First of all, <laughs> As we saw in, I think, the last episode, it's been a few weeks since I watched the last episode. In the last episode, we had the scenarios and the scenes with Shinji wearing Asuka's suit, being very maiden-like, and his friends being excited about that. And then in this episode, because Shinji and Asuka have to, you know, like, get the fusion dance down and shit, Shinji's friends see him in, like, 80s aerobics attire. <laughs> and they're blushing about that shit, too. There's a lot of gender things going on with Shinji. And then on top of that, the thing I noticed the most is that the more Shinji dresses up, or more off, the more Indra, the more Shinji Shinji embraces his <laughs> gender androgyny, the more he finds himself attracted to girls. Because he wasn't, when Ray, with the whole heterosexual debacle <laughs> fuckery happened with Ray, he like didn't blush or anything. It was like awkward for him, but there was no like blushing or anything. However, as he like unifies with Asuka in mind, body, and apparently gender, this is the, f the most we've seen him attracted to a woman in the series. Now, maybe it could like be Asuka is just the first girl he's actually attracted to and the rest are just women. But I find it coincidental that the more Shinji dresses up in quote unquote traditionally girls clothes, the more he like identifies with femininity, the more he, he feminizes, the more he finds himself attracted to women. So initially I thought it was the heterosexual agenda. Now I'm thinking it's the lesbian agenda. Shinji is lesbian coded. <laughs> As the kids say. We love an exploration of sexuality and gender. This is going crazy places. Although he has a boyfriend later, so maybe this is the heterosexual agenda in the end. <laughs> in some like super roundabout way. Also, Asuka is definitely pegging Shinji. And the two of them together are hilarious as a duo. And I also like side note feel that Kaji is only seducing Misato not because he actually likes her, but because he's trying to pull her into whatever agenda is going on in the secret with uh, Shinji's father and the, the blonde lady and Kaji in that like big secret room with like the the Naruto ceiling jutsu <laughs> symbols. Talk about committing the gravest anime sin of all time. Cutting, Cutting out the, out beach, the episode. beach episode. Although part of me thinks this is also part of the attacks on heterosexuality I've seen within the series. <laughs> the TBD. So Shinji is told that he is a domesticated man. Something that is traditionally associated with femininity. With being a trad wife. <laughs> or whatever that shit is called. And at this point I'm wondering one if Shinji is part angel because we haven't met his mother and two is ray ever gonna do anything like i i she, the girl has literally done nothing like the entire series <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 10 episodes in. So this episode basically introduced us to Team 7. In this Team 7, Asuka is Naruto, Rei is Sasuke, which means Shinji is Sakura, which also unfortunately means that while the, sh the show may <laughs> prep us to want Rey and Asuka together. No, just kidding. So while the audience may ship Rey and Asuka the most, and while it may narratively seem to position Asuka and Shinji the most, ultimately, it seems like Rey is gonna end up with Shinji. That's just math. But Team 7 is doing the teamwork. It was adorable. Uh, apparently, Rey is now the Blue Ranger of the group. Also, this is probably the funniest episode I've seen so far. Like... <laughs> The old man with the fucking, uh, buckets of water to stay warm. Like, there's just so many randomly comedic beats. Someone's gonna die soon, I have a feeling. We also learned that the, the world is run by this Shibura system. Shout out Psychopaths. Uh, except there was one girl who was way too excited about AI. Oh, and just to add, there was an Angelus episode that looked like a fucking water skater that cried acid. I realized that if I was in the world of Boku no Hero Academia, 
I, that would probably be my quirk. So it's been confirmed. I think we kind of could already, they basically already told us, but the second, the f is it the second coming? <laughs> Jesus, just kidding. No, the second impacto. <laughs> <laughs> no for no daddy yankee feature in fargie was caused by the seven tails more naruto references <laughs> not only is this all about the male lens being it's all about naruto apparently before naruto naruto before naruto before naruto there was eva before jujutsu kaisen there was naruto it's a pipeline <laughs> and y2k was caused by the seven tails y2k being the second impacto no feature with fergie the original version and if we also consider the dynamic of everyone you could say misato is the kakashi the significantly less kakashi so that means naruto is actually lesbophobic and misogynist but we already knew that part <laughs> have you seen naruto so naruto is the diss track the misogynist diss track evangelion fascinating the more you know they've like said offhand it's almost like shinji was born to pilot and eva i'm convinced he's probably the, like his father somehow f***ed an angel i don't know how that worked out but so this episode was fairly uneventful ai was a mistake they knew back in when did this come out 1998 they knew back then they were right they predicted the future a f***ing recap episode <laughs> Well, at least half of one. So now I have a question that I feel like I've forgotten to ask this entire time, which is like, maybe I've asked this already, but if Shinji is the third child and Rei is the first child and Asuka is the second child, but Shinji was the first one to fight in an Eva, apparently, or an Ava, whatever the f***. Like, I I need this, this number, numerology explained to me. Are they all half angels, per my theory? Or is this just like, we just picked numbers and we're trying to, there's a backstory that will be explained or maybe there isn't. Or maybe there was an order, but then the release order. I don't know. Also, apparently Ray might be, uh, I don't know, compromised in some way, a replacement, a scroll. if we're getting... Uh, well, I, I would say relevant, but uh, Secret Invasion was like over a decade ago. <laughs> but the current Secret Invasion, at least. We'll call it a Strangel for now. Ray might be compromised. She might not be who she seems because her Gundam just went nuts. So there's Project Adam, which is probably related to the first revealed Angel Adam. And then the, there's the Project Ava, which I'm going to assume is probably also a relation to Eve. So I'm going to assume, like I was assuming earlier, that all the, 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 the Avas come from Angel. And if we're getting real biblical, then you could say, because it didn't, in the Bible, I think what Eve came from Adam, she's from his ribs or whatever, so the ribs of the angel Adam are be what's probably being used to make the Avas. Because Ava, Eve, Adam, Adam, the, a the angel Adam, ribs, or whatever the f***. <laughs> <laughs> to create Eva's. Uh, the Bible is shaking and crying right now. Oh, Kaji's a spy, so I guess now I'm supposed to like him. Ugh, <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, and I kind of figured the mother would be dead. I, I, I thought the mother would be an angel, but she's dead. I mean, technically, you could say that's the same thing. So my guess, Ray is probably a clone of Shinji's mom. <laughs> I feel like with the mother imagery, and we heard his mother's voice, and it kind of sounded like Ray's, and then Ray being excited when he called her mother-like when she was, like, wringing a rag, like, last episode. I think it was last episode. I don't know how long this episode has been, but... And then on top of that, it's like she got excited because of that, and then the fact that she is drawn to Shinji's dad, and Shinji's dad is drawn to her. Definitely a clone. We got the Clone Wars up in here. Shinji saying, fighting is a man's job. Stop it. You're so cute. <laughs> But please. Also, it's like episode what? What am I on? 17? Um, I just finished episode 16. I have 10 more episodes to go. Where the hell is Shinji's boyfriend? <laughs> when I tell y'all, this has been like a three month ordeal just to get, not even to get this video done, just to get through this damn series. It has been about three weeks. <laughs> since I watched the last episode. I think the last episode was when Shinji was facing an abstract concept. I believe that's what they've been alluding to in this episode, but yeah. For me, there's gonna be no end of Evangelion because this is just literally taking forever, but I'm gonna try to get through this today. They haven't said it, but it looks like Suzuhara is the fourth child. So it looks like when I have been saying that I'm waiting for Shinji's boyfriend, he's been here all along. <laughs> Who the hell is Kaoru? <laughs> Apparently he doesn't matter. This poor girl, I wouldn't even say poor girl. She's like borderline on annoying right now. She is trying way too hard to get at Suzuhara, even though she does not realize that he has a boyfriend. He literally turned her down. <laughs> <laughs> for his boyfriend in the same episode. She needs to take a hint. I feel like Suzuhara definitely is gonna die now at this point. Because we have the whole Eva coming in on a cross. Giving Jesus Ariel edition. Ray like blushed. Is it Ray? <laughs> Why are you forgetting names? It's been so long. Ray was blushing when Shinji was like, I cleaned up your trash. She was like, oh. and I mean, <laughs> 
same. I feel like they're kind of like realizing Asuka and Shinji have the superior dynamic, but at the same time, it's like, oh, but Rey is here and we need to do something with her because she literally has done nothing this entire series. <laughs> so let's just force her to have a crush on Shinji now. This shit is so f***ed up. <laughs> Shinji trying to kill his boyfriend. That was brutal. I am going to have nightmares tonight. <laughs> what the f I mean, I didn't think things were going to turn out like this. <laughs> but I immediately, as soon as they were like, having all this ambiguous, like, oh, we're going to have the test and I haven't told Shinji. I'm like, she's not going to tell Shinji and Shinji's going to find out because he's just going to die during the test. I mean, he's alive in the end, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but probably irreparable damage has been done, I'm going to assume. Kaji and Shinji giving us post <laughs> Just kidding. But that woman-man metaphor, island, alien, whatever the f***. <laughs> Kaji's the true villain of the story. And I hate the class rep because, uh, <laughs> she's just like me. Sure. Shinji willing to kill literally the entire nerve organization, literally an entire city of people as revenge and retribution for his boyfriend is stonewall levels of pride. And it seems like it's mutual because even when the class rep is with Suzuhara visiting him in the hospital wanting to give him a bento, he's still asking about Shinji. <laughs> she is truly losing. Also saying, come out Shinji. Uh, I think he's been out for a while. I mean, I keep complaining about Kaji, but I mean... <laughs> What else am I gonna say about him? But he's gardening during a crisis, only a man. Another reason I dislike him is because his relation with Shinji, despite being like age gap glory, <laughs> I feel like he's an agent of masculine identity. Him telling, like, basically indirectly telling Shinji to pilot the Eva is like telling him to be a man. And I hate that. <laughs> Shinji is an androgynous boy. So, first world problems when you're living in a third world. <laughs> but, like, this lady was complaining about hard chairs. Woman, Woman the, world the world is at risk. at risk. So, we've learned the name of, I guess, the government organization in charge. Maybe it was mentioned before and I wasn't paying attention, but Sele or Sele, S E E L E. Turns out them and Shinji's dad have a pet and owner relationship relationship kinky but yeah shinji after like fusing way too much with the eva has become an abstract concept himself this episode several episodes after fighting one i've heard about like final episode of the main series of evangelion and from what i understand it's like trippy and this is trippy so, like how f***ing trippy is it gonna be so shinji had a fever dream and his whole the the, the, the female side of his harem was there which I, I found offensive where was suzuhara where was kensuke where was kaji you had three you just and another three. And then there was a droplet at the end of it. Because <laughs> they were all saying, you want to have s basically in a roundabout way. And then a drop of pre at the end. <laughs> Is that a metaphor? Oh, and then after... <laughs> He sees the harem and they're all saying you want to f Then it shows, then it shows his, his, mother. his mother. And then beyond that, Misato was like, Takaji, like, you remind me of my father. Like, Sigmund Freud is having a field day with this episode. I was told this f scene was, like, long and uncomfortable. Whoever told me that, you were right. So this backstory of everything is just a f disaster. So we learned about Fuyutsuki and Akari's love story. Uh, except then it pivoted to Yui and I was like, oh, this is not, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> But then it introduced Gendo, and it was super BL, <laughs> is all I'll say. It's very much giving, like, brat, and, like, you can't tame the brat. It also is, like, the general dynamic of, like, the professor and then, like, the, the rambunctious student. What was that one BL I reviewed years ago? <laughs> There was one where I, I don't think I liked it, but it's like the exact same dynamic. Now meeting Shinji's mother, yeah, she's super ray like We don't know where the hell Ray came from. And I called it, the Avas come from Adam. What do you know? When you grow up Christian, you think the dots just connect. Oh, and then we got that Ritsuko's mom and Shinji's dad had a thing. Gendo truly must have like <laughs> the most bomb in history. Okay, so like, again, going into this, I, I know about Kaoru's existence. I know what Kaoru looks like. I know what Kaoru's nendoroids and scale figures look like. But Kaji in the flashbacks kind of looks like what Kaoru looks like. So I'm going to assume that is Kaoru the Kaji version of Rei to Shinji's mom? That's my theory right now. It's probably not true at all, but we love a theory. So I continue to wish that Evangelion was like, I don't know, an, a late night adult anime. <laughs> giving us these off-screen awkward sounding scenes. I feel like she's headed directly for death. That's what I'm expecting. Or isn't she supposed to become Patchy the Pirate at some point? So either she's gonna lose an eye and or die. Maybe both. <laughs> I was just wondering where the hell Suzuhara is. Apparently he's still in the hospital. That's a crime. Rei has become Lancer. Her master is clearly Gendo. A Fate and Eva collab could be really interesting actually now that I'm thinking about it, but <laughs> let me try to finish this series already. So I was right 
Asterisk, Ray is a clone. Shocking. We don't know the full details. We just know that Ava's are actually, now, hear me out. This is like weird wording. It is, Ava's are human beings made from Adam in the image of God. This is Ray number three. She's on her second reincarnation, just like how Summer. Additionally, there's apparently going to be a total of 12 Ava's, which is just like the apostles. Does that make Ray Jesus? Cause she was unit zero, zero. So Ray was probably Eva Jesus, is Eva Jesus present tense and past tense, all the tenses, future tense too. I wrote woof she knows, I don't know who knows what. <laughs> something. Last two things, uh, on the wall where Ray apparently was quote-unquote birthed was the words top and bottom, so that means Ray is a Fujoshi, and then Ritsuko apparently also was in love with Gendo, so that d is legendary. <laughs> Whip it out! So you're telling me that I picked up this entire series, which has been a slog to get through, only for the canon gay couple of Shinji and Kaoru. I had to wait how many episodes? 23 episodes! Just for this mother to be introduced and, and killed, killed in the same, same episode. episode? I hate this. I'm homophobic now. <laughs> <laughs> Shipping Suzuhara and Misato. The only good thing that happened in this episode is that we got confirmation that Ritsuko was f***ing Gendo Ikari. So like, <laughs> that is truly, truly a thing of legend. Suzuhara has also been written out and so has Kensuke. What the f***? This is like the worst episode of anime I've ever seen. First of all, this is like fast forwarded as f***. This should have been at least like three or four episodes. <laughs> Whatever the f*** happened here. Issue number one I have with this series cumulatively, and I know I have two episodes left, but whatever. I don't like how the direction of the series has gone from like Shinji being like weepy, whiny, always running away in like the, the first like 80% of it. <laughs> Where like the women around him and like, you know, I was getting like, oh, maybe this is like trans coding Shinji. This is like lesbian coding Shinji. Like it's giving gender, gender expression, gender exploration, identity. And the women were all like strong around him they were like I don't know if stable is the right word but they were pretty like steadfast in their existence their identity and what they do they were all capable and then like as Shinji has gotten more confident and capable all the women have gone to shambles and it's all happened as he's gone in the robot more I have yet to hear them say get in the robot Shinji is that some last episode shit maybe it's some like English dub shit maybe that's why I haven't heard it as he's gotten more hardened in mask and less like trans lesbian coded the lesbian lovers he's supposed to have have been getting eviscerated that's how I was feeling at the top of the episode and then as the episode was going as Kaoru was introduced I was like oh okay things are getting really gay really fast so maybe it's just like some cis homo agenda because it was also like in the midst of all these women letting him down there's a man <laughs> and then the f was like introduced and killed and Shinji was like oh my god you said you liked me or whatever and it's like Shinji <laughs> You just met him. It also feels like now Shinji has been coded to be homophobic because the first gay man he loved and the first person who ever liked him turned out to be evil and betrayed him. So now Shinji, I feel like, is heading down the homophobic route. And at least throughout it all, heterosexuality <laughs> prevails. Because Misato and, uh, I think his name is Hyuga, they had like a little moment and I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. Like, Akaji is dead. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. I'm assuming he's dead. But yeah, what the f***? I have two episodes left. The end of this, that's not the end of Evangelion, I've heard is like a disaster and makes no sense. And that's already how I'm feeling at this point. And then what the f that last hold before he killed Kaoru? That was like as long and awkward as all the f scenes in this shit. Maybe even longer and more awkward, if that's even possible. I have two I more? Two more. <sighs> <sighs> what a waste of f***ing time! <sighs> what the f***? I, I, I have no words other than the fact that the only redeeming aspect about this final episode, I don't think there was anything in the second last episode, that, that one, but the, the last episode, only redeeming thing, the egg metaphor. It comes full circle. <laughs> We love to see it! If you don't know, you don't know, you know, you know. And I mean, granted, this is not 1990 whatever the f when this came out. There is an end to Evangelion. Uh, but I'm, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna, you know what? <laughs> I don't know I don't if I'm know, gonna know, watch it. You know what? Get the authentic of the times experience. They didn't know back then there was gonna be more Evangelion. They didn't know there was gonna be an actual end, end to Evangelion. So why should I get the end to Evangelion? I mean, maybe, we'll see. If y'all wanna see me... <laughs> <laughs> react to the end of Evangelion and maybe even the rebuild series, uh, let me know in the comments below. If this video does well enough, maybe there will be more. But if not, I'm just gonna stick with this what the f***. <laughs> Was that it?
it. Shinji was a highlight. I liked Shinji at least. Uh, Suzuhara was a highlight, but then he got uh, incapacitated and then written off. He didn't even really do anything, even though he was the fourth children. Kaoru was a massive disappointment. Asuka was fine. Asuka grew on me. Rei was fine. I liked Rei. Misato was fine. I didn't like Kaji. He died. He had it coming. He had it coming. But that's everything for this video. I will see y'all next week uh, for a very special banana fish video for Ash Lynx's birthday. See y'all then. Bye!